My name is Jack Frosty, former member of the working class. Moved here from working as a New York stockbroker as a teenager. The year I turned 26, I had my own ice cream company. I made 490 pounds, which really fizzed me off because 30 shy of 10 pounds a week. I also dress like a degenerate. I drink slushies like a kid. I eat ice cream like five or six times a day. Eh. Oh yeah, I love sweets. On a daily basis, I consume enough sweets to give a sugar rush to the whole of Scotland, England, Ireland, and Wales for a month. I take humbugs for my blood sugar, brain liquor shots to keep me focused, chocolate to mellow me out, sherbet to wake me back up again, and fizz whiz, well, because it's awesome. But of all things in Frosty's white fridge freezer, this one tops them all. See, enough of this can make you rule the streets. You don't have any competition. And I'm not talking about this. See, enough of this can make you a better person. You can buy more stock, you can buy bacon rolls for the staff, you can buy better crocs, and after a little while you can start letting people off with a few pounds. It all started here, in a sweet shop just outside my hometown. Just after a year of working there, I've been awarded Employee of the Month five times in a row. I was at the top of my game. Okay, Jack, have we got bad news for you? I'm afraid I'm going to let you go. What do you mean? You're you're joking? I'm I'm the best I'm in the shop. I'm afraid not. No, I'm afraid I'm going to let you go. You might think you're good, but a few people think you're not. So many sales, you know. You can't, you can't just kick me out. But you might think you're good, but I don't. I'm afraid. All right. Okay. Okay, sorry, I'm going to let you go. And bang, just like that, my life changed. Learned if I wanted to be successful in life, I had to do it by myself. That's when I saw her. Her paint, her wheels. They both gleamed with prosperity. I got the bike from a guy called Raymond, who gave me a great deal. Then after that, it was just me, her, and the open road. Hey, is that your scooter outside? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, um, Honda, it's, it's a nice scooter. It's nice, yeah, it's nice. I know, yeah. Um, I'm Jonah, by the way, Jonah Hill. Jack Frosty. Nice, nice to meet you. Sorry, if you, if you don't mind me asking, um, what, do you, what do you do for a living? You know, we got the scooter, the, the Crocs, the nice hair. I'm just, just trying to piece it all together, you know? Uh, I'm an ice cream man. I'm a stockbroker on the side, but that doesn't really matter, you know? Yeah, stockbroker, stockbroker. But the ice cream, the ice cream business, you're in it. Yeah. Right? Tell me, again, if you don't want me asking, um, how much did you make from that? Well, 70 pounds, well, 72 pounds last month to be exact. 70, 70, 72 pounds? 72 pounds, yeah. I'll tell you what, Jack, um, if you show me a paycheck right now for 72 pounds, I'll, I'll, I'll quit my job and I'll come work with you. Hey, Mum? Yeah. Yeah, I quit. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It just, it's just the way things have worked out. No, you'll have to do the dishes by yourself now, Mom. Alright, what we do? Bye bye. Jonah and I talked a bit more that day. We have things in common, like we both have a taste for money, we both have a love hate relationship with Crocs, but most of all, we both love ice cream. After Jonah joined the business, we finally had enough money to rent our own first office. A tiny room deep underground. It was dark, dingy, and damp, but at £10 a month, we weren't complaining. When we got the office up and running, I decided to employ some staff, so I enlisted some of my oldest friends to come along. First, we had Megan Eclair, studied confectionery at Bourneville, and now a French pâtissière, with the knack to sell absolutely anything to anyone with charm and sophistication. There was Daniel Brownie, kicked out of the business as his brownies were anything but brown, if you know what I'm saying. Then there was Rosemary McFlurry, ice cream fanatic, though I didn't agree with her love for plain vanilla. And finally, Caitlin Homebaking. A terrible name agreed, but she had some seriously fizzed up parents. Alright guys, if you're gonna work for me, you gotta know how to sell. So, Caitlin, 
Some of this fudge. I'll have you finish my brownie first. All right. Well, damn. Some of this fudge. All right. You get hungry, right? Oh well, yeah, I get hungry. Boom! Supply and demand, my friend. See, that's how you do it. That's my man right there. Yeah. Yeah. Now we had a well, business going. Oh, right. Frosty <laughs> Enterprise. A real business. We soon started moving up offices, employing more people, moving up again, even more people, until we became the leading ice cream distributor in the whole of the area. We got so big, we even got some huge producers involved. Alright guys, got a very important figure for you here today. He's at the top of his game, and he's let us have a new flavor of ice cream in our company. So, give it up for Mr. Walls. I'm here to tell you about a new kind of vanilla. Vanilla's a plain flavor. Yeah. It's got, got real vanilla pods in it. Oh. Oh. Alright guys, alright, give it up for Mr. Wall! <laughs> Mr. Wall's here, it started out like every single one of you here today. Look at him now, a household name. This man never takes no for an answer, just like you shouldn't. So if you want to have a life like his, if you want to have your own house by the river, if you want to have your own ice cream company, pick up your helmet and start riding your bike. If you want to be a millionaire, pick up your helmet and start riding. Do I make myself clear? Us costs. Sweets are expensive these days. We had to find a way to pay for them all. After all, every wage had to be paid, every rent. We need to find a way to keep turning profits. Aye, aye, Jackie boy. Are you dead? Yeah, I'm alright. You're looking good, Nancy. I got my hair done. Turn 21 again on Wednesday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's back it up there. The lovely woman you're looking at here is Nancy. Leader of the Highland Underground Sweet Network, and lone survivor of the 1984 Glasgow Ice Cream Wars. She was my fixer, see? She'd get the sweets I needed for the company at a fraction of the price I could in my own. Sure, they may not have been as best as far as quality goes, but you can hardly resist. So you have usual lie? Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. I'm the rest here by the bottle. Aye. Thanks, man. Aye. Good man. Look. I know you're going to have a few questions about what's going on here, but that doesn't matter. The real question is, was any of this legal? Absolutely not. Hey, what's the case? What's her name, Nancy? Working with Frosty. Hmm, I think we might get in this time. <coughs> Boys, fire the car. We're going to get some sweets. Another 50 cent mix and a tube of Smarties, please, man. Do you mean a 50 pence mix? Uh, yeah. Sure thing, man, sure thing. That'll be one pound 40, please. You mean a dollar? No, no, I need. I mean one pound 40, please, sir. You mean a dollar? No, no, no. Even if we accepted dollars, it wouldn't cover the exchange rate. We'll call it a dollar. No, 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 one pound 40, one pound. Well, John. Could use the Jedi mind tricks. Thanks, Steve. Now, with everyone employed and Nancy on the scene, we are unstoppable. Hello? We know what you're doing, Jack. And it ain't good. What do you mean? We know about you. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? What do you know about my sweets? There's nothing sweet about your candy, Jack. We found hairs in your Haribo and fingernails in your Smarties. But I guess you don't feel so smarty now, do you, huh? Nice one, Steve. Thanks, John. Who even are you? You mean you don't remember us? We're the ones that deported you. The FBI. What do you want? You just watch yourself, Jack. Another good one, Steve. I know how good I am. 
My God. The FBI. They were on me. I had to hide my stock and money fast. I had the stock all over the place, wherever I could find a space. In cupboards, under sinks, heck, even in my mattress. As for the money, I put that in an offshore account, because we all know how secure they are. And that was it. I was almost in the clear. They had no evidence against me. I just had to do one final thing to leave them off my case. I had to step down from Frosty Enterprise. You know, when I first started this company, I knew the day would come where I had to hand over to Jonah. Hey, the, the company's going to be better than ever with Megan, Daniel, Caitlin, Jonah running it. It's, it's going to be amazing. You all know Robert, right? He's a guy that wears cotton shirts, he eats branded cereal, he has his own car. But that's not the Robert I knew. The Robert I knew came up to me three months back in his rent. He asked me for 20 pound up front just to feed his family. What'd I do, Robert? Tell him what I did. Right, Ben? You gave me a check for 50 pounds. That's because I believe in you, Robert. Just like I believe in every single one of you here today. Flumpin' love you, Robert. Flumpin' loves you, Jack. I flumpin' love all of you. I love all of you. <laughs> you know, I told you guys never to take no for an answer. To always make a sale, you know, because you guys deserve it. And I guess this is me taking no for an answer, you know, so I'll let you down. But you know what? You know what? I'm not leaving. I'm fucking leaving. <laughs> And so Frosty Enterprise would remain under Frosty name. It was time to celebrate. You ready? As I thought. After I left the office that night, they had it searched. They found everything. The Smarties, the hearts, the saucers, and even the walls. Jonah's phone call only pushed them over the edge. BAM! Had me locked up for three years. A sentence drastically reduced by writing out every single person in the operation. Nancy got taken out first. Get your hands off me, you pugs! Closely followed by Megan and Claire. Daniel Brownie, Rosemary McFlurry, Caitlin Homebaking, and last of all, my right hand man, my accomplice in it all, Jonah Hill. Sentenced to one year in federal prison because of what I did, what I pushed them into. I told them never to take no for an answer. Maybe they should have taken it from me. Jack Frosty. Some of the spudge. Chocolate and tennis nights. Some of the spudge. You keep talking. Some of the spudge. Good size. Stuck in your teeth. Good size. Some of the spudge. The name is spudge. 